and a short time ago I spoke with the Health Services Union National Secretary. Cathy Jackson, welcome. Thank you, Chris. Do you have any idea at all about what's in the 1,100 pages of the Fair Work to report that's been handed to the Commonwealth Director of Public Prosecutions? Before I answer your question, I just want to make it quite clear that I'm not here as the National Secretary of the Health Services Union, as I've been gagged by my national executive. I'm here as a private citizen and a member of the Health Services Union. Um, I've not, and to answer your question now, um, I've not seen the report. The report has not been provided to me. I note that in Miss O'Neill's media release, she states that on the 28th that we received such a report. I have not received such a report. If anyone else in the union has received it, well, they've not provided it to me. Well, Fair Work says that there are 181 breaches, apparently, 105 are civil, so assuming that up to 76 might be potential criminal breaches, could any of those refer to you? Definitely not. Those breaches relate to Mr Thompson, and I think that Ms O'Neill should have made that quite clear in her report that she put out today. Those allegations that they've made against me are uh, administrative allegations, and I, I want to address those tonight. Those allegations are that I missed four meetings of the National Executive while I had primary, as a working mother with primary school aged children, I did miss four meetings of the National Executive over a period of time. And um, the other issue was the 06 07 financial returns, which I could not sign. I was not prepared to sign a report that Mr Thompson had commissioned and that I knew was incorrect. And I followed the advice of Fair Work Australia in providing that information to them. So what do you make of this investigation? There's already an ombudsman inquiry into it. Should there be more? I think there definitely should be more. I believe there should be a judicial inquiry into the goings-on at Fair Work Australia. I believe that either it's, you know, when I say I believe, I also include in that the public have already made up their minds. The members of the Health Services Union have made up their minds and I believe the media has made up their minds. You say the public's made up its mind, your members have made up their minds. What do they think then of Fair Work Australia? What do you think they've made up their minds about? I think it's taken an extraordinary amount of time to come up with what they've come up with today, which is referred to the DPP. The report that the National Executive of the Health Services Union provided to Fair Work Australia was a comprehensive report. It should have taken them three, maybe six months to come form a view and at that point refer it to the DPP. I don't think, I don't think it, it, is, it is at all acceptable to be referring something to the DPP four years later but also not to name people in that media release. So you think that this independent statutory authority has been deliberately trying to protect the Labor government? There's an appearance of that. Do you believe that to be the case? Well, Chris, you, you're a very good um, questioner um, and your questions are great, but I'm not prepared to go to say other than what I've previ previously said, that the members are saying that this is the case, the members of the public are saying that's the case, and so is the media. Now, at this stage, Craig Thompson has not been charged with any offence. He's not been charged with any civil offence. So is this perhaps just a vendetta that's being pursued by you? Why would, I, why would I have a vendetta? That's what I ask. There are people out there smearing me and peddling those um, smears against me. My primary interest, as I've said from the beginning of this sorry saga, is that we need to have accountability and transparency in our organisation. I stood up with the rest of the National Executive finally and said enough was enough and, and, we'd, and I referred this matter to the police. That's where it, sh that's where it ended up and I'm sorry it didn't end up there earlier. And as we, as we sit here tonight, we're still in the position where Fair Work Australia is still not releasing any information to the Victoria Police or the New South Wales Police, but instead they're going through the DPP to do that. But during the course of all of this, which now stretches for a number of years, you've made lots of allegations. In fact, the last time you were on this program, you accused ministers of interfering with this process, and yet you had no evidence for that, did you? Well, let's have a judicial inquiry where they've got widespread powers to compel people to come and speak to them. And do you believe that government ministers should be called before that judicial inquiry? Yes, I do. Which government ministers? Uh, well, that's a matter for the, judicial, uh, the terms of reference of the judicial inquiry. I don't think it's a matter for me. Um, and I'm not prepared to speculate on the 7.30 report. If Mr Thompson was charged by the DPP, do you think that he should stand aside from his seat in Parliament? I think it's a matter for the Labor Party and the Prime Minister and Mr Thompson. This is not a matter for me. Do you think, though, that the Prime Minister should ask him to step down? 
I think there was a time when the Prime Minister um, should have asked him to stand down and I think it's too late for that now. Are you surprised that the Prime Minister constantly says that she has confidence in Mr Thompson? Uh, yes, I'm totally surprised by that. Now, you're a member of the Labor Party. Are you at all disturbed by the fact that your actions might, at some point in the future, bring down a Labor government? Well, they're not my actions. I want to make that quite clear. This is not of my making. Um, this is not at all of my making or the health services union's making. This is, once again, and I, I'm sorry that I've got to say this, once again, it, sh sh it shows how dysfunctional the ALP has become. It, is, it shows how unions are being abused and used by the Labor Party when it suits them. And I think it's about time that the union movement had their own position. Um, and this is a great example. This is a, this is a case study of what can go wrong when the factions and um, uh, others get involved in the health services union. Cathy Jackson, thank you. Thank you.